Hello, my name is Christopher Runstrom, and I'm your weekly horoscope columnist here on Astrology Hub. And I want to welcome you to this premium episode of the Astrology Hub podcast. This week, I wanted to talk to you about the solar eclipse taking place in the zodiac sign of Libra on October 2nd. Now, eclipses have a bit of a reputation in astrology. That's because they were always associated with the light disappearing from the sky. With the solar eclipse, the moon would move in front of the rays of the sun, blocking its light, maybe perhaps in the middle of the day. And a lunar eclipse, a lunar eclipse is when the shadow of the earth fell upon the moon, a full moon, turning it a sort of tawny red brown. These were seen as portents of doom back in the day. People in ancient times used to view these occurrences as being unnatural. They weren't part of the regular cycle of the moon moving through all of her lunar phases. They weren't part of the regular cycle of the sun rising in the east, moving across the sky, and then setting in the west. How could the sun be blocked from the sky? How could the light of day suddenly fall into the pitch of night in an instant? There must have been something wrong about that. There must have been something ominous. And the beautiful light of the moon in the evening, how could that suddenly turn brown and red and sullied in appearance? Again, there must have been something ominous or, or, or evil to be interpreted from these ideas. And indeed, in the 2500 plus year of astrology, these eclipses were seen as being associated with certain events. A solar eclipse was inevitably associated with the fall of a public figure. It might be a king or a high priest or someone of great renown. And people would have said, oh, there's a solar eclipse. And so this means the end of this sort of person. This means the end of a regime or of a king or of a kingdom. We must, we must be full of fear and dread. And then when there was a lunar eclipse, this was seen as having a, a malevolent effect upon the land. It might be associated with plagues or pestilences or famines or things of that sort. Well, thankfully, over the years, astrology's view of eclipses has tempered quite a bit. They are no longer seen as being associated with catastrophes or disasters. In fact, nowadays, they're seen as times of wonder, especially here in the United States, where in recent years we have experienced solar eclipses. People race to go see them because you never know when you're going to see a total eclipse like this again in your lifetime. The way that the darkness falls from the sky, almost like the way that rain falls from clouds. It's almost as if the day has been unhitched and all the light just drops right down there where, where you are standing. They're a very dramatic sight indeed. But as I said, astrology has tempered its view about eclipses over the centuries. They are still greeted with some kind of apprehension or, or some kind of uh, preparation, but I'm going to go and explain to you why and how we can see that in terms of the way that astrology is practiced today. So as I referred to earlier, there are two types of eclipses. There are solar eclipses where the moon moves in front of the sun. Um, and then there are lunar eclipses where the earth moves between the sun and the moon at the time of the full moon, casting its shadow on the full moon. A solar eclipse is always associated with a question, which is, where am I going? All right. So solar eclipses are very forward moving in terms of the way that they are projecting themselves into time. And lunar eclipses, lunar eclipses ask the question of, where have I been? So a solar eclipse is more uh, future oriented, future directed, and a lunar eclipse is more sort of looking over the shoulder and seeing how, how, how well I'm doing and if I'm doing all right in my life. These, these are the questions that are associated to the two. So when we have this solar eclipse taking place in the zodiac sign of Libra, that means that issues, themes, ideas that are associated with the zodiac sign of Libra are going to be uppermost in mind. Libra 
is a zodiac sign. It's a very unique zodiac sign. In fact, there's no other sign like Libra. And the reason why I say this is because Libra is the only zodiac sign that's not a human being, an animal, or a creature. The other zodiac signs are, are living beings, all right, uh, from the fish and the crab and the scorpion to the galloping centaur or the uh, man pouring out jugs of water or uh, the maidenly woman. Okay, Libra is the only zodiac sign that is an object. It is an inanimate object. It is an instrument. And that in and of itself is quite a statement. Libra, as you already know, uh, is symbolized by the scales. It's symbolized by the balance. And that's a very, that's a very fascinating choice that that would be the image that that symbolizes Libra. Uh, it's, it's fascinating because in part, Libra is the zodiac sign of the autumnal equinox. Um, we have a vernal or a spring equinox, which is Aries. And then if you uh, move six signs away from Aries, you will arrive at Libra, uh, which is the autumnal equinox. You can you can count six signs that arrive at Libra, or you can count six months in the agricultural year and arrive at Libra. So equinox means equal day, equal night. I mean, that's our understanding of the word equinox. Actually, the literal translation of equinox is equa, equal, nox, night, equal night. And so it was inferred that it was equal day, equal night. And the Romans had a very uh, strong fondness of Libra as being connected to the autumnal equinox because they saw it as being the balance of the year. The agricultural year begins with Aries, which is thrusting forward and planting the seeds and getting things up and going for, for a new year of, of, of crops and, and vegetables and fruit, things to be harvested during the summer. And Libra um, represented the time of year, autumn or fall, when everything had been harvested. And now we were going to be moving into a time of year in which we would ex be experiencing uh, shorter days and longer nights. So this idea of a balance, of the balance of, of light and dark, was something that the Romans found very appealing in their uh, regard to the zodiac sign of Libra. The earliest image of Libra, uh, or uh, yes, the earliest image of Libra really is Anubis, uh, who was the Egyptian god of the dead, who uh, would stand poised at the scales. And when someone died, Anubis would take the heart of the deceased and place it very delicately on one plate of the scale. And on the opposite uh, plate of the scale, was placed the feather of Mot, uh, which belonged to the Egyptian goddess of justice. And so they would be, they would be weighed uh, to determine the value of the soul. This image gets carried on into images of St. Michael uh, in Catholicism particularly, but he also shows up in, in different versions of Christianity as well. St. Michael, the archangel with, with sword raised to show justice, uh, you might recognize that from courthouses where you see blind justice with a sword raised holding holding the scales. Well, before that, it was St. Michael um, with, with, with the uh, sword of justice holding the scales, and then in the scales were uh, balanced uh, good and evil. And, and so, so this discrimination between good and evil, this judgment, of what was uh, what was benevolent and what was malevolent, these were always associated with the scales. These were always associated with Libra. And with Libra being the first of the autumnal zodiac signs, we go from Libra into Scorpio, Sagittarius, and then the winter solstice, which is the which is the time of year of the shortest day and the longest night. Here, here in the autumn, we have the descent of the sun, and this was mirrored by the descent into the underworld. And the underworld, of course, was the land of the dead and always associated with judging souls. And uh, these, this was connected to Libra. 
Now that might sound a little heavy for Libra, like, you know, Libra is judging souls and, and things like that, but that's really the legacy of the image. And that's really um, how it was associated in the uh, imagination of Western civilization for 2,500 plus years. Libras are known nowadays more for not being able to make up their minds, you know, so, so, so scales are seen as, you know, sort of uh, uh, going up and down, not being able to make up my mind. I, I, I vacillate impossibly. I can't possibly make up my mind. And this is an association. It's even kind of a bias, maybe even a prejudice that's been glommed on to Libras. We need to remember that astrology has a very specific way of contextualizing each one of the zodiac signs. Libra, first of all, is a cardinal sign. Cardinal signs are associated to changes of season. Uh, Aries brings in spring. Cancer brings in summer. Libra brings in autumn. Capricorn brings in winter. So these are the cardinal signs. These are the cardinal directions, the major changes of season in an agricultural year. Cardinal signs by their nature are unstoppable forces. Okay. They bring in the new season and they're not going to, they're not going to be a they're not going to be um, um rejected, told no, told, you know, we don't want summer right now. They 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 signal the bringing in of the season and the season comes roaring in, like that phrase, for instance, that they say about March. March comes roaring in like a lion, you know. Um I guess they went with lion because rams don't roar, they bleat. But anyway, uh, March comes roaring in like a like a lion. And and so here a season comes roaring in. It, it, it is unstoppable. So a cardinal sign is going to fix its sights on an objective and it will do everything in its power to reach that objective. It will do everything in its power um, to accomplish uh, a goal, to produce a result. Um, where Aries is really easy to think of because Aries headbutts, you know, it's the ram's headbutting. And so Aries charges at something and, and slams its, its horns against its opponent. It will not be vanquished. It will not be, it will not be overthrown, you know. Um, Capricorn is also another easy one. Maybe it's because they both have horns or something, but Capricorn is also another easy one because Capricorn climbs. You know, um, I remember when I was learning astrology, people would say Capricorns climb over people to get to the top. And, and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm not like that. You know, so, but so, so Aries charge at something head first and Capricorns climb up to the top. They will, you know, they're associated with being very Machiavellian and doing anything it takes to get to the top of something. And then when one thinks of Cancer Libra, one finds oneself kind of like, well, um, you know, but what people forget is that Cancer based on the crab will absolutely pursue what it wants, but it does it circuitously. It does it by approaching what it wants in a circle, indirectly, looking like it doesn't want what it wants until when it's within reach of its prize, it snaps it with its, with its pincher, with its claw, <clears throat> and it takes it for its own. So cancers are very good at hiding their traces, um, throwing people off the scent, and approaching something indirectly, you know, until it gets what it wants. Libra invites, all right, uh, which I, I, I love describing that about Libra. Libra invites. It invites you to place an object that you think is very valuable into one of the plates of the scale, or it invites you to step up onto the scale to be weighed and for a value to be assigned. Um, I like invites for Libra because Libra is ruled by Venus, and Venus is named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty, and so she's always inviting. Uh, what I also like about it is that the scale is a very ancient instrument uh, that was used a lot in uh, early cities, but it was also used a lot on ancient trade routes. Now, you might say, well, I could see where scales would be used in cities because their scales are associated to courts and justice okay and so you're 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 weighing a, a, a verdict i can see where that would work but ancient trade routes ancient trade routes i I'm, I'm i'm not really getting it well 
remember that scales are basically um, a beam uh, that's affixed to a pole. And uh, on this uh, beam are two dishes that sit opposite one another. You put an item in, 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 in one dish and the other dish goes up, and then you use counterweights to bring that dish back down until you can find a balance between the uh, two. Now, finding this balance between the two wasn't um, on these ancient trade routes, you know, some sort of philosophical exercise of being balanced <laughs> or anything like that or anything like that. What it was is that if you put something into this dish and it went down and then you use this dish for the counterweights, you could determine what the value of what was put in this dish was. OK, if you put gems, for instance, in a dish and and you use counterweight, you can you can see that they're worth X amount of money, which might translate in coins or it might translate in silks or rugs or or, or clothing or, or other things that were being traded. So where someone could have a more inflated sense of value, like, um, oh, this is really uh, valuable to me. I know that it's worth at least, you know, a thousand dollars or something like that. And they put into the scale and they would counterbalance it. They might find that actually it's worth two hundred and fifty dollars. All right. And so the person might be like, no, no, I am. Um, this was my uh, great aunt Priscilla's favorite ring. It's more than two hundred and fifty dollars. It's a thousand dollars. I know it's it's been appraised. It's been seen like this and 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 maybe the jeweler or something is like well no i i i've appraised it and it's really just 250 dollars well when you're on an ancient trade route okay and ancient trade routes are going from uh the middle east and persia into the far east you're dealing with peoples tribes societies civilizations um who don't all speak the same language okay and um not only do they not speak the same language they don't necessarily have the same currency, you know. So if you take out um, a scale and you put an object in addition and, and you counterbalance it with another, that creates an optical picture of value. Someone who doesn't speak your language could then see for themselves what that works out to um, as a value and, and, and they wouldn't dispute it. You know, they wouldn't, I mean, they could decide not to trade with you and go somewhere else, but but this, this, this rendered a judgment that was indisputable. This is what's at the heart of Libra. Uh, Librans believe in good judgment, all right? The, the reason why they might vacillate or go back and forth is because they are asking themselves if this is true judgment. OK, let's say they're listening to um, you complain about um, a coworker. OK, a Libra is going to listen to you complain about the coworker, And it's and a Libra, for the most part, isn't going to be like, oh, yeah, I hate Betty, too. You know, they're going to be like, well, you know, maybe Betty was having a bad day. Maybe maybe Betty was um, struggling with with something. Maybe you caught Betty. Um, you know, in, in a moment where her guard was down, maybe she received horrible news or something like that. Or maybe Betty is covering for the fact that she can't really keep up. And maybe what she needs here is help rather than you complaining. What, what, what goes on with the Libra is that they always automatically assume that there's another side of the story, that, that, that there's another way of seeing the situation. Um, and what that goes back to is that a mediator uh, would sit down with di both disputing parties, listen to one party's version of events, and then turn to the other party and listen to their version of events. And this is what is really being uh, symbolized in the zodiac sign of Libra. So Libras, you know, will ask questions. They won't weigh in right away. They won't give your give you their answer right off the bat. Um, they may ask more questions about like, well, why do you see it that way? Or what would happen if this were different? What would happen if that were different? And so they're always testing out things. It can give a sense of being safe and being cautious, but, and, and, and that might be part of it too, but what Librans are going for is good, sound, solid judgment. Because Libras know that once a judgment has been rendered, 
there's no really taking that back again. Okay, so so Librans are very sensitive to the consequences of a decision, you know, what this judgment, how this judgment may impact and how it may be understood by other people. And sometimes that might be on the side of the populace. It might be like, you know, very uh, applauded judgment. This is this is wonderful. That's so fair. What a wise and sage Libra you are, you know. But sometimes it might be like, how could you do this? You know, how could you stand on this principle? I mean, I understand standing on principle or something like that, but but don't you see that this person is a horrible person? And how could you, you know, want to protect this person? You're you're agreeing with this person. You're you're encouraging the horrible things that they did, you know, and Libra may say, I may not agree with what this person did, but the law protects this person, you know, or there wasn't um uh, the evidence wasn't strong enough to incriminate. So rules and laws are very important to a Libra. The way that something is said is very important to a Libra. Words, okay, are very important to a Libra. Words are very important to all the air signs. That's Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. But Libra, the reason it's it's very careful about committing is because once it, it's committed, it can't take back that commitment again. But at the same time, it can be very nuanced. It can be very like, well, I told you I was committing to this, that, and the other thing, but I didn't tell you that I didn't say anything about something else. So this kind of literalism, this kind of particular, uh, th th this kind of specificity is going to be very, very important to a Libra. It's also why Libras can be a bit vague and non-committal because they're thinking about it. And people will press them for what they really think or whatever, and they'll remain just as vague or non-committal because they're still processing that information. So Libras, unlike their opposite sign, Aries, don't believe in being impulsive. Um, they don't believe in in um, might makes right. They don't believe in in shoving people out of their way and 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 getting getting what they want. You know they're. They're very sensitive to how this is going to play out with other people. Air signs are relationship-oriented signs. They're bridge builders, not bridge burners. And so they, they want to make sure that it's going to play out in a way that's harmonious and good for everyone involved. And sometimes, sometimes that can result in taking a very unpopular decision, which they will do, um, and they will stand by. You know, you you have the scale with the dishes trying to, you know, wh where the dishes go up and down, trying to determine good judgment, but never forget that there's a sword that's connected to images associated with Libra, uh, whether it's uh, Saint Michael or or, or 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 justice. Okay, there's a sword that's also available that's going to enforce that rule that's going to enforce that law that's going to enforce that judgment once it's been rendered it it will not be unrendered and that really speaks to the cardinality of the zodiac sign of libra hey there astrology lover if you're interested in getting a weekly personalized read on your sun sign and you love christopher you won't want to miss his written weekly horoscopes from astrology hub every week you can get a horoscope from christopher delivered straight to your inbox for free just go to www.astrologyhub.com forward slash horoscope to start getting yours this week. And now back to the episode. So when we have a solar eclipse in the zodiac sign of Libra, when the moon moves in front of the sun and blocks its rays, um, it doesn't have to do that literally. It can do that in the way that it's being read in an astrological chart. Okay, it's blocking that light. We have this sense of a change in direction. We're moving forward, you know, uh, and 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 our change of course can be very radical and even very dramatic during the period of a solar eclipse. But we can't see where we're going. All right, and this is what's very important to keep in mind with the solar eclipse: if the moon is in front of the sun, it's blocking its light. So we are plunged into darkness. We can't see. We can feel all the urgency 
of a solar eclipse, you know, like, like I have to change the course of my life, or I have to move in this other direction. We can feel all the urgency of the solar eclipse. We can feel all the insistence of a solar eclipse. You, you, you really must do this, and you, and you really must do this now. But we don't really have sight. Okay, we're kind of driven by um, these these passions or or these impulses. Now, let's say, for instance, you were a fire sign like Aries or Leo, Sagittarius. You're all you're all in with that. You're good with that. You know, Sagittarians love to gallop. You know, Leos love to pounce and roar. You know, Rams love to you know smash their heads against other other Rams. You know, like the fire signs are like good with that. You know, and and even the water signs can be very impulsive in their way. You know, when things get very very emotional and they can feel very, you know. I have very strong feelings about this, and I'm not going to bend. I'm not going to yield. I'm going to, you know, overwhelm, you know, tsunami like. Okay. But when you're dealing with an air sign, particularly when you're dealing with Libra, there is a lot of discomfort around not being able to see. There's a lot of discomfort around not being able to calculate. Okay. There's, there's a lot of discomfort around not being able to plan or to strategize. So when there is this solar eclipse in the zodiac sign of Libra, it's going to bring up issues, as I said before, that are associated with Libra, issues dealing with justice. That can be an actual uh, 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 case that's before a judge or, or, or a suit or a dispute. It can bring up uh, justice. It can bring up uh, relationships, particularly marriages. Uh, why? Because marriages are encoded by law. They are they are sanctioned by law. If you choose to divorce, you're going to have to go through uh, divorce lawyers and attorneys or some sort of uh, legal uh, apparatus or bureaucracy in order to dissolve that bond. You can't just like wait, walk away one day and say, hi, I'm divorced, bye. You know, you, you have to split up property concerns and all these sorts of things. So uh, solar eclipse and Libra could deal with justice, an issue of justice. It could deal with uh, relationships, marriage, uh, but it also can apply to business partnerships or creative collaborations. Um, and it can deal with... Uh, war, obviously. I mean, uh, Venus is the ruler of Libra, and Venus is named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty, but Venus is also the bringer of peace and things like contracts and pledges, which are all associated with Libra, um, borders. Uh, the, if, if these are transgressed upon, if these are broken in some sort of way, you can have a breakout of, of of war, you know, and you can or or you can have injustice being answered with justice, which might take a more unjust twist. I mean, these sorts of things can happen in the diminished, darkening light uh, when there is a solar eclipse in a zodiac sign uh, like Libra. Libra holds things in place through law and order and rules, okay? And and these can be broken during 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 one of the the eclipses, um, but not all of us are going to be dealing with uh, uh, court dates, and not all of us are going to be dealing with uh, divorces, and not all of us are going to be dealing with uh, trespasses on our border and going to war over these sorts of things. So so what are most of us um, going to be dealing with during a period of time in which there is a solar? eclipse in the zodiac sign of Libra. Well, what we're going to be dealing with is being thrown off balance, all right? Libra wants to Libra wants to be balanced in its view because it wants to be impartial. It wants to be judicious. Um, and it wants to take a sober view of what might be a very heated debate or dispute. And it wants to settle it. It wants to reassert justice. It wants to reassert peace. It wants to reassert rule and law. It's not against anything that goes against rule and law. I mean, again, Lieber wants to hear the cries of the rebels or the, the resistance or people who have a dispute. This is what happens in a court of law. Both sides come together and they 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 bring their they, they make their strongest case. Lieber then has to judge it and create something that everyone can live by. 
so when we have a solar eclipse in Libra, the light's gone out in the zodiac sign of Libra, and so things are are off balance. And how I like to deal with a solar eclipse in Libra is really this idea of me versus we. Okay, so if we can return back to the scales with the uh, beam affixed to a pole and the two dishes opposite one another, let's put in one dish me, okay, and the other dish we, okay, we're, we're bringing together Aries, which is opposite of Libra, and we're dealing with Libra, which is very much on the we. All right, so let's say in your life, you're experiencing more me than we, okay, so, so, so the, the me, I can't believe I'm doing this choreography, but anyway, the, the me is lower here, you know, it's heavier, you know, and, and the we is up here, maybe with legs dangling or something like that. All right. This might be a period of time in which there is too much me. And what you might want to do is ask yourself, are, have, have you shut out people in your life? Are you um, not listening to any sort of counter argument? Are you not listening or taking in different opinions or different input or alternatives? Are you just, you know, talk to the hand? Or are you waving away? Are you really insistent? Because remember, an eclipse will bring out urgency and insistence. Are you really insistent that this is the way to go? You know, what I've decided is, is, is my way. It's my way or the highway. This is the way to go. I'm, I'm insistent on this. Are you driven by maybe a sense of like injustice, you know, like, like, like injustice has been done to me and I'm, I'm going to go and get my, you know, pound of flesh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get something for it. I'm, I'm going to retaliate in some sort of way. Um, are you, uh, do you, do you want to break a bond or a union? You know, this person uh, deceived me or, 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 or I'm, 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 I'm with the wrong person. So I want to end this, you know, are you, you know, or, or um, in a partnership, have you become very much the strong, per the, the strong man, so to speak? Okay, the 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 despot, the the boss, the control freak, the person who you know what I say goes in this relationship. You know, have have you become imbalanced in that fashion? If that is the case, then the solar eclipse in Libra is pleading. It's it's going to appeal to you to listen to reason. It's going to appeal to you to take in um, a point of view that you dismiss, that you want nothing to do with, that you might even find completely repulsive. You might even think it's evil, it's wrong. It's, you know, you're so driven by this retaliatory or getting back. Uh, this might be a little bit more exaggerated than your life circumstances, you know, but I'm I'm trying to embody the the spirit and energy of the solar eclipse, you know, because it is going to be insistent. It's going to be very driven. It's going to be like there's no there's no bending. There's no there's no other side of the story, you know. To introduce another side of the story is to introduce weakness, you know. It's 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 to distort. It's to you know uh, 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 lie about things. So if you're too much in your me. As far as relationships are concerned, they can be romantic relationships, they can be business relationships, relationships with friends. If you're too in your me, this is going to become very exaggerated during this period of time to the point where you can't help but recognize that people are pointing it out, okay, where people are like, um, either not returning phone calls or, or coming to see you. Or, or people are like trying to talk at the same time as you and you're talking louder and making them, you know, like, like insisting, you know, and where people are just like, oh, you know, there's no talking to you. I don't know how to talk to you. If you hear, I don't know how to get through to you, or I don't know how to talk to you more than two, two or three times in a day, you are, you are definitely in that plate that is heavy in the me. Um, and you would be well advised to moderate your me. Um, moderation is very much a Libran ideal. Uh, it's very much a Libran value. You would be very well advised to moderate your meanness and um, to listen, not explain yourself, um, to ask and not tell people what you think is the answer, um, to be open and not to be closed, to enter 
onto your plate with an openness, all right, rather than, you know, arms crossed, rigidity, this is the way it's going to be, you know. Um, you know, that they say that justice is blind. Well, to take off the blindfold, okay, and be more receptive to what other parties have to say, this would be something that would really be in your own self-interest at this time. Because to continue down the road that you're going uh, may bring about catastrophic results, you know. Uh, and what I mean by catastrophic results is you may lose friendships, you may lose relationships. You may lose associations over this. You may think you're being very principled or that you're standing on principle. But ask yourself, are you really standing on principle or are you just insistent on getting your way? These are heavy questions and these are very honest questions, but they are questions that you should be asking now uh, during this solar eclipse in Libra. So let's return to the image of the scale again. Here we are with the two plates. And let's say you've got too much we and not enough me. Let's say it's the we plate that's that's weighing heavier and it's the me plate that's 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 risen over here and and has no no um effect on the we. The we is very insistent. The we is very urgent. The we is, you know, this is what I think, this is what I believe. What can happen when you have too much we? in your me, is that you can negate the things that you want. What can happen if you have too much we in your me is that you can negate the things that matter a lot to you. You become much more, um, you, you, you become very concerned with what other people think and with what other people feel. You might even be in a position where you don't want people to misjudge you. Or you may feel very judged by people and you're trying to figure out the right way to get them back on their side or to make them happy again. So, so the off balance here is you need a me to act as a counterweight to the we. And if it's not doing its job and there's too much we, you're too involved in not wanting to hurt people. And you're too involved in a fear of letting them down. And so what that does is that that creates a situation where you're on the outside looking in, okay? You're, you're, you're not connected to your heart. You're not connected to what you want. And you've lost your centeredness. You know, you've lost, you've lost what matters most to you. And the opinions of people can be very fickle or the opinions of people can be very solidly wrong, <laughs> okay? Um, <clears throat> And that's why in all of our relationships, we depend on that balance between me and we, where we're continually working out that that conversation, that that dialogue. It's an ongoing thing. It's not it's not a set result. OK, so. So when you get too involved in not wanting to hurt someone's feelings or not wanting to let them down and you're trying to do things to cater to this person, that person and the other person. Not only have you lost your rudder, so to speak, so you're not moving in a direction, you're like a ship that's going around in circles, but you may find that you're not being completely truthful with each person. You're definitely not being truthful with yourself. And you may find that in your attempts to make them happy or not want to hurt them, you're actually making matters worse. Libra is very much about, as I said, that that judgment, and that's going to be based on choice. Now, there's this marvelous phrase that the uh, French existentialist philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre had, and it really sort of speaks to this Libra dilemma right, right, right to it. And it goes, um, the, the phrase is, ne pas choisir, encore choisir. Okay, so ne pas choisir. Uh, not making a choice, encore choisir, is still a choice. So ne pas choisir, encore choisir means not choosing, not making a choice, is still a choice. All right? So when we abstain, you know, I'm not going to be a part of this, that's a choice. When we say, I'm undecided and I'm going to remain undecided, 
that's a choice. If you've got one person who's insisting that you go with them and another person that's insisting that you go with them and you don't know what to do and you don't want to disappoint or make the other person unhappy, so you don't choose, that's a choice. And it's not a very good one because you keep both parties hanging. You keep both parties in limbo. And so, and, and this can be Libra on a bad hair day, okay? When, <laughs> when they don't make the choice, they don't recognize that they've made a choice by not choosing. They keep both parties hanging and then they still expect to make nice or to continue conversation or be friends with both sides or something along those lines. And this is where Libra gets its bad reputation for not making up its mind or vacillating, you know, and it's often blamed on not wanting to hurt someone. When you are born under the sign of the scales, and here I'm, I'm, I'm deliberately changing the word from balance to scales, because when we use the word, like if you're born under the sign of the balance, you know, you can be balanced and, and, and that, and that has a particular notion nowadays, which is, I want to be balanced in, in, in views, you know, and I, and I don't want to go with this side or that side. There's a sort of abstaining that's implied there. There's a sort of ne pas choisir, encore choisir, you know, that's, that's implied there. We make choices. If you're a Libra, you have to make a choice because you're born under the sign of the scales. And the scales are about rendering judgment. The scales are, are, are about saying, I really feel bad about your great Aunt Priscilla's ring not being worth $1,000 like you thought it was, but, but it really is worth only $250, which isn't bad. That's better than nothing, but that's $250. Now, someone can agree or disagree, do business with you, not do business with you. But you have to, as a Libra, render judgment. Librans often find themselves in positions where they're mediating or they're sitting in judgment of someone. And you can't, you can't not do that. You're a cardinal sign. You have to do that. You know, you have to say, this is very pretty. This is beautiful. This is a work of art. I'm going to assign this first, you know, uh, first place. Or you have to say, so-and-so won this competition. They they showed that they were stronger or faster or smarter or better at chess or a better bowler or whatever. You have to be able to judge. And that judgment has to, ha has to be made. Otherwise, we wouldn't have things that set precedent. Otherwise, we wouldn't have things that are set to make us do better than what we do. You know, if you don't have a championship, okay, if everyone wins just by participating, you have no standard of excellence. And believe me, with Libra, they very much espouse a standard of excellence. Uh, Venus is always upscale in the way that she looks at things. She never, you know, goes for anything. Okay, so with Libra, that standard of excellence is very important. So let's talk about that phrase, that phrase we all know, which is freedom of choice. Freedom of choice doesn't talk about a prerogative, okay? I have the prerogative of a choice. I have freedom of choice because I should just have this prerogative to choose, this, this freedom to choose, and, and I'll decide when I decide. That's not what freedom of choice is about. Freedom of choice is understanding choice. Understanding choice by making an informed choice. Understanding the responsibility of a choice. That all choices have consequences. That all choices you make, every choice that you make, is going to affect something else in your life. It can be a person, it can be a place, it can be a thing. And in this network of choices, because freedom of choice doesn't exist in a vacuum, other people have choices. You know, other people can choose to listen to you and other people can choose to change the channel or other people can choose not to show up or other people can choose to be there with you or other people can choose to dispute, to harangue, to persuade, to appeal, to try to change your opinion. 
Um, and maybe they succeed in changing your opinion and maybe they don't, but we all live in a network of choices and all choices, decisions, all decisions have consequences. We can't always plan out how our choice or our decision is going to take place outside of our making that choice or making that decision. When we're faced with a choice or decision, that's when we're in the driver's seat. All right. That's when we're uh, behind the wheel of the car. And so that's why with self-reflection or conviction or knowledge or information or careful consideration, okay, we want our choice to come from that. Okay, we want our choice to be the best choice that it can be. Okay, because that's that's really what we're sending out into society. That's really what we're sending out into our interactions. That's what we're really sending out into the universe. We have control of our choice after we've chosen, after we've decided. That may have a response. People may ignore it, <laughs> but but that's what's important. And that's the thing that Libra is teaching. In the end, Libra wants to find that balance between me and we. Libra wants you to be true to you, but Libra wants you also to understand that there is another person involved. And so they have a choice which may not be on the same page as you. Okay. And so you want to respect their choice. You can do things like argue, persuade, appeal, win over, decline, reject. You know, you can do all of those things. Libra has no problem with that. But Libra just wants you to honor good judgment. Good judgment. Good judgment for you and good judgment in the best of your ability for the people and the lives around you. If you can do this, if you can sort of find your way to this again, then the solar eclipse in Libra would have done its job.